All right, WWE Fastlane 2017. You know, not a good show. I thought it was very boring, very tedious to sit through. Uh, j just a chore to watch this whole thing. And uh, I, th I just thought there was a lot of uncreativity in the main event. I thought I was really looking forward to the main event. I thought it'd be interesting to see how they would book this. And uh, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I don't know. I just expected a lot more uh, than what we got. But uh, but let's go through this whole card. We start off the night, which I thought was going to be a bang. You had Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn. And, uh, you know, they, they decided to make Joe look strong here. Uh, the, the match was pretty underwhelming from a match quality standpoint. Obviously, these two guys are capable of so much more. This could have been an amazing match if they gave both gentlemen the, uh, the green light. But, you know, they, they booked this in a way where they made Joe look strong, but at the same time, the match dragged on to the point where it didn't really come off like a squash match. So Sammy, De Sammy definitely looked like he could hang with Joe, but, you know, the match didn't really over-deliver or overstay its welcome. But, uh, you know, Joe goes over by submission. You know, a nice little match to open up the show, but nothing groundbreaking, no nothing indicative of what these guys could do. Next up, we have Luke, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson taking on Enzo Amore and Big Cass. If you notice, the crowd's been kind of, uh, you know, negative towards Enzo uh, the last couple of shows. You know, they, they, they've been kind of telling him to shut up and uh, kind of been cheering his opponents. I, I think people have kind of gotten annoyed by the guy, but... Uh, you know, there is a lot of people that do think he's extremely talented, so he is a, uh, a unique character, uh, to, to say the least. But, you know, th this match, I thought it was uh, really f had a raw feel to it for the first couple of uh, minutes. And uh, I, I thought it ended, I thought they took the ball away from them just as they were getting it going. The, the crowd was really getting into this, and I, I was getting into it as well. Uh, after a slow start. So so there we go with that. Next up, you have Sasha Banks taking on Nia Jax. And, and this was cool. This reminded me of like a female version of Bret Hart in 1995 on the undercard of an In Your House pay-per-view. This reminded me of like Bret taking on Bam Bam Bigelow uh, on the undercard, but just, just a female version of that. You know, so Sasha goes out there with Nia Jax. Obviously, Nia pretty much dominates the match, but Sasha finds a way to, uh, to win by submission. I just thought I told a nice little story. Nothing special, but just a nice little sh little story on the undercard right there. And next up, you had the uh, this whole segment with Cesaro, Rusev, and Big Show, which um, was quite um, quite a task to sit through. Uh, Cesaro looked really good on the offensive end. Here, he had a match with uh, uh, Jinder Mahal. Mahal looks like he's on steroids, though, man. He he looks jacked. Um, so just. Uh, that caught my attention right there, uh, his physique. But, uh, you know, Cesaro and Jinder Mahal, uh, yeah, like I said, whenever Cesaro was on the offensive end, the crowd was into it. There was a couple moments where the where it really dragged, and the crowd was chanting CM Punk, CM Punk. So that wasn't good. Uh, Big Show looks like he lost some weight. He, he looks in great shape. I'm not sure if he's going to wrestle Shaq at WrestleMania. Uh, Shaq uh, is is working more dates now with uh, the NBA. The, the the television schedule in the NBA is, is insane right now. So, um, But it looks like Shaq is going to be working every single Monday night. So um, I still think Shaq versus the Big Show is a possibility. I know most people probably don't want to see that. But, you know, if, if you've been following uh, the NBA, Shaq has been kind of... Uh, you know, responding to Big Show's uh, tweets on the show from every now and then. So just to rub that at you. But yeah, Big Show defeated Rusev. I thought Big Show looked good, man. He, he looked like he lost a lot of weight, and he looked uh, pretty good. He, he didn't look terrible. But, you know, nothing special there. Next up, you had Neville taking on Jack Gallagher for the Cruiserweight Championship. They always give the Cruiserweight guys such poor placement on the card. Uh, the odds are always stacked against them. But here, uh, I'd probably say this was the best Cruiserweight match since the... Um, since the title's been defended on pay-per-view so far, you know, Gallagher kind of brought this unorthodox style to the match, and it worked. A lot of his headbutts got great reactions here. Uh, the, the German suplex, where Neville Irish whipped Gallagher into the rope and then German suplexed him. You know, Pac has always done that move on the indies, and it was, it was cool to see him bring it back here. Looked like he dropped Gallagher on his head. Uh, you know, just great back-and-forth action here with uh you know Neville hitting his his finisher off the top rope. I forget what he calls it, but he's been doing it on the on the indies for years. And uh yeah, it came off great. Just a breathtaking uh you know high spot right there. So uh so there I, and I definitely this is what I would do for WrestleMania. My opener would be Neville versus Akira Tozawa singles match. Give them like 10 to 12 minutes. 
that will rock the house. Um, you know, if they are going to do a ladder match this year, I would I would stick to having it just with the cruiserweight guys, just to make it different. If they do do go in that direction, I think doing it with the Intercontinental titles uh, would just kind of be repetitive. I'm kind of sick of seeing the ladder matches at WrestleMania. Hopefully, they just they just won't go in that direction for this year. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Next up, you have Roman Reigns taking on Braun Strowman. A lot of people were worried that this was going to be your uh, WrestleMania main event. Uh, I thought the beginning was kind of slow as shit. Um, a lot of the people that are, you know, if you're not a big fan of Roman Reigns, the the bright part about this match is the, the reaction for Roman really wasn't that strong. You know, he got a lot of heat out there, but there really wasn't a lot of support for him. Uh, fans were definitely behind Braun Strowman. There was a lot of thank you Strowman chants whenever Strowman was on the offensive end. J just very boring and very, um, you know, uh, j j just just very ugly to watch in the beginning. Um, I will give both guys credit. You know, they it, they they really they booked this match as to look like Roman had just went through a war, and uh, it, it came off pretty well. I have to admit they they really turned things around towards the end with. Um, you know Braun countering a uh, a, a spot and uh, kind of giving him a uh, a suplex onto the table that actually came off pretty well. Um, just some good back and forth action with uh, you know Roman kicking out of finishers and eventually he hit the spear. Just uh, you know it, 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 they really made Roman earn it tonight. I'm not a big fan of the the matchup though. I I, I thought this uh, went a little bit too long for my taste considering the talent involved. Uh, yeah, look at that. I got 17 minutes and 20 seconds. Jesus Christ. Um, next up, you have Bailey taking on Charlotte Flair. So, so Bailey, Bailey wins the, uh, the championship on Raw, and everyone was kind of bitching how, um, you know, I, I, I don't see the point of her winning it on Raw because you know she's going to lose to Charlotte on the pay per view because Charlotte never loses on pay per view. So, you heard a lot of people, you know, bitching about that. Uh, but Charlotte's uh, streak count comes to an end. It looks like her, uh, you know, time in the main event scene is finally gonna. She's gonna finally take a break, and we'll finally get some new blood in the main event scene, which is good. I think the women's division has gotten very repetitive over the last year, even though it's been good. You know, you you give Charlotte credit for the work that she's done, but I I just think it's time for her to step aside uh, just for a little bit and and see what we can do with uh, uh, Bailey and Sasha. It'd be really interesting how they book Bailey and Sasha if they do have Sasha turn heel. I don't think you necessarily have to turn Sasha heel, but uh, I'm excited to see Sasha and Bailey at WrestleMania. It looks like they're going to go in that direction, and um, you know, hopefully they can kind of recapture the the, the magic that they uh, delivered at the NXT uh, Brooklyn show. Uh, a couple years ago, but uh, yeah, Bailey and Charlotte Flair. I, I, th I thought it was good. I thought the uh, I thought they got off to a slow start as well. But as the match progressed, um, I thought it was good. I thought, thought Bailey played a great underdog here. Charlotte actually busted out everything to put Bailey away, but she couldn't do it. And uh, you know, it's very similar to the match on Raw where uh, you know Sasha comes out to give the assist, and uh, you know nothing special. But I, I, I still thought it was. Um, yeah, it might have been. Yeah, you know what? This might have been the uh, second second best match of the night, or the the match of the night. It's pretty much a toss up between this or the cruiserweight match. And then the uh, the main event, we had Goldberg and uh, Kevin Owens in the main event. And uh, yeah, I, I I guess they uh, they just don't have a lot of confidence in Goldberg to uh, wrestle. I I just thought this would have been an interesting matchup if they touched. I understand why they didn't do it. Uh, Goldberg has a lot of momentum now, and, and they continue that. But the the, uh, the victory didn't come off as well as the Survivor Series match with Brock. It wasn't that convincing. Uh, Jericho came out. You know, his, uh, his music just played, and Jericho came out to distract Owens. Goldberg hits the spear into Jack Hammer. They basically don't even touch... Owens was stalling for time throughout like the first five minutes, so I was just like, "Wow, are they even going to touch?" And they they did not touch it. They really didn't touch it all. So you really didn't, you really can't judge this match by match quality. Uh, I thought this would have been really really interesting with the, the the you just had two very very different styles here, and uh, but no, uh, you're not going to see these two guys wrestle. That's not why they brought Goldberg in here for uh, to wrestle. Um, you know, Goldberg is going to face Brock Lesnar for the uh, Universal Championship of WrestleMania. This is the chance for Goldberg and Brock to redeem themselves from WrestleMania 20. And I like what Trademark said. Trademark actually said to me that they could have a 10-minute sprint with a lot of German suplexes, spears, F5s, jackhammers. And it could be pretty awesome. I, th I think both guys are capable. Both guys are great athletes. It's all about the effort and the preparation. If Goldberg and Brock prepare... 
I think it could be a fine main event, but uh, at the same time, I don't think Brock deserves to be champion. Uh, I, I, I just, I don't know, man. They, the, the company just never want, they just don't want to give Jericho his moment. You know, Jericho's gotten so over to the point where I think everyone would love to see him, you know, win the championship um, at WrestleMania. You know, he's never really had that big moment where he's won the championship where it really meant something. It was always some type of screwy finish or some type of bullshit finish where, uh, you know, it made the other guy look stronger. So I, I just I just don't ever feel like Jericho had that one big moment as a babyface where he had that title win. And I think the fans really want to see that. But instead, they're choosing Brock over Jericho in the main event. They think that's going to be the bigger draw. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I still think Owens and Jericho... Uh, the, the feud is off to a great start. I, I, I think these guys are going to cut some great promos on Raw. So I'm definitely looking forward to Owens and Jericho. But, you know, guys, you know, WrestleMania as a whole right now, you know, I, you know, obviously no one's ever happy with the WrestleMania card. You know, some people stress out more about the WrestleMania card than they do about their job or, or paying their bills. Uh, you know, it's just the fact of life. You know, no one's ever going to be happy with WrestleMania again from, from top to bottom. But, you know, let's just go through the card really quickly. I'm happy with uh, Jericho and Owens. That won't be for the title. Goldberg and Brock for the championship, probably main eventing the show. Uh, I, I'm, I'm anxious to see it because I think both guys are going to redeem themselves, and, and they should. They're very capable of it. They're both in great shape right now. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. I don't like the idea of giving AJ, uh, putting AJ in the triple threat match for that match. I just don't think that makes any sense at all. If you were going to have AJ in the WWE Championship, ask him why did you take the title off of him? So that doesn't make sense to me. I just don't think he fits in that match. Uh, I don't have a problem at all with seeing uh, AJ Styles uh, wrestle Shane McMahon. Uh, everyone keeps saying that they don't want to see that match, but I think AJ and Shane, you know, they could probably steal the show at WrestleMania, and it, and I don't think it'll just be a spot fest. I just, I definitely think both guys could wrestle. See, I think too many people are judging Shane by that match with Undertaker. I think the reason it was boring was because Taker's just too old at this point. But I, I think give Shane an opportunity to go out there with AJ. You know, I, I think Shane ha Shane deserves a chance to, uh, you know, um, capitalize on his momentum that he did last year at the Hell in a Cell match. So. Yeah, I think AJ and Shane is fine. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, you know, John Cena and The Miz, man, they're cutting some strong promos, man. The promo work between them is great. You know, the intergender tag match is what it is. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I really don't like intergender tag matches, but uh, that's what you have to deal with for that match. But I think the buildup and the promos will be strong between uh, Cena and The Miz. Um, you know, I think it's possible that they might just switch it up and make it Cena versus The Miz in a singles match. I wouldn't mind that, but the promos have been so good that, you know, I, I think we could just deal with whatever they give us at WrestleMania. So, yeah, I love the fact of them having Tozawa face um, Neville in a one-on-one -on -one match, but, um, you know, that's probably going to be a clusterfuck with... Uh, all the cruiserweights kind of jammed into the match, maybe a ladder match, maybe they'll do like a cruiserweight open. I'm sure they'll fuck the cruiserweights over, but they, the cruiserweights should open up WrestleMania. I, I think that's the perfect way to open up the show. Don't give them the bathroom break match where the crowd's already burned out and, you know, they don't want to see them anymore. So it seems like that's what they've been doing with the cruiserweights, just kind of, you know, putting them in spots where they're uh, going to fail. You know, it's tough for the cruiserweights to really work in this era because a lot of the guys that are in the main event scene, like AJ Styles or Sami Zayn, uh, you know, we're cruiserweights or X Division guys in the past. So it's really tough to make it work in today's era. But uh, we'll see what it is. Is that pretty much it for WrestleMania? So, yeah, Shaq and the Big Show is a possibility. I hope it, they don't go in that direction because Shaq is not in very good shape right now. So, uh, and it's coming off of a torn Achilles. I just don't think Shaq and Big Show could, could deliver anything watchable. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah, so Fast Lane, skippable pay per view. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know what you're going to do with, uh, Joe, you know, the, the, maybe, maybe you do Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to do Undertaker versus Roman Reigns, but the seats have not been planted for that yet. Uh, Triple H and, and, and uh, Seth Rollins, I th definitely think will happen. You know, uh, Triple H is the perfect guy to wrestle if you're hurt because uh, the guy knows what he's doing in the ring and whatever you're, he's doing, he can make it, he can make it look believable. And, um, 
he could kind of hide the injury. He's done in the past with Shawn Michaels at Taboo Tuesday when, when Shawn tore his meniscus and they still went out there were able to put on a good storytelling match. So so even if Rollins doesn't recover totally, I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll give us something at least watchable. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Triple H and, and Rollins is on. The, the only question is Samoa Joe right now. Like, what do you do with Joe? Uh, you know, it would be a shame if he's wasted at this uh, WrestleMania. But... Um, We'll see what happens. Maybe you could do Joe versus Nakamura. I definitely think that uh, the WrestleMania definitely needs that match, and uh, it, it, I think the time will be right for that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, Fast Lane, uh, not a good show. Uh, no, 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 really good, great matches on the show. Probably the match of the night was uh, Neville and Jack Gallagher, or maybe Bailey and, Fla and Charlotte Flair. It's a toss up between both of them.